Hi, the name is Eric Dorr and I'm currently sitting at Montserrat. In this video, I want to talk about the main reasons why I decided to let go of my personality type label and why I changed my personality. Over the course of the past 10 years, I identified as an INFJ personality type. Sometimes known as the advocate personality type, the INFJ was known for strong introverted intuition and strong extroverted feeling. I identified with these types because of many logical reasons. At the time of taking the test I was highly burnt out and I was in a state of mind where I was highly introspective, focused on often my own inner world of existential reflection and contemplation and often more concerned with solving puzzles and problems than with engaging with the outside world. At the same time, in social settings I often took on the role of the caregiver or the helper. I would often act as the support figure in friendships and I often took on the role of the counselor or mediator or support figure in order to help other people. But after a lot of time and self-reflection, I started feeling a stronger and more and more intense urge to go out and see the world. I moved to the Netherlands, met up and they started dating an ENFP girl and lived together with her for more than uh, five years. And because of this, you know, Carl Jung, he would used to say that when two interactions and two people interact, it's like a chemical interaction. Both are transformed by the experience. And I was certainly highly transformed by this experience. She brought me out into her world. She got me less shy, less anxious to go out and try new things. She made me more bold and she made me more connected to other people and to the real world. After the relationship, I was left with a lot of questions and I had to spend a lot of time reflecting on myself. And at this point, I felt, well, certainly I was sad that the relationship ended because she was a wonderful person. I also felt the sense of what I think most in singles experience after a breakup freedom, right? In the sense that suddenly I could reclaim and reconnect with parts of myself that were very important to me that to some extent I had compromised in the relationship, right? And suddenly I felt then more free to be me, to go my own way, to live life how I wanted it to. And then the question was, wait, what do I want? And a major realization I had was that I didn't want to be scared anymore. I didn't want to be scared of traveling alone or I didn't want to be scared of taking risks, going on roller coasters, of experiencing other cultures. I didn't want to be afraid anymore of uh, pushing myself out there, organizing groups and events, connecting with people. And uh, as that happened, I felt the natural gravitation towards being more extroverted. But that wasn't all. I also felt that at this point of time, I was ready to let go of the plans, I was ready to let go of the rules, and I was let, ready to let go of the structure. I was ready to just live my life, to be more flexible, to be more spontaneous, to be more open to improvise. And so I went on this trip to Barcelona and I didn't plan a single thing. I didn't even make a single list of places to visit. I just went there and every single day I just did whatever I felt like. And this became the new norm for me outside of the relationship. Suddenly, I went from being the planner that helped make decisions and helped make sure that we were always on time and that things worked out the right way to the improviser, the person that found a way to always land on my feet, the person that always knew how to figure out and deal with and handle things in the moment. Now you might say then that, oh, Eric, so you become an ENFP. <laughs> well, in any sense, Carl Jung didn't really believe in personality types and neither do I. And so why would I even want to identify with a type label like that? Sure, it would explain a part of me. It would explain this part of me, but it wouldn't explain every single aspect of me. And Carl Jung believed not in types, but that each individual was their own unique human soul, right? And he thought of people based on their level of development in each function and he saw that People could be both introverted and extroverted at the same time, right? And so if I would say I was an extrovert, yeah, sure, I was, I am, but at the same time, I'm also an introvert. And how do I mean with that? Well, of course, while naturally I love to engage with and connect with other people, I also love to spend time by myself. Most of this vacation I spent by myself. I work remote, which means I don't really interact with other people through my work. And I like being able to work by myself. 
I have a lot of creative hobbies and interests and things that sure bring me into reading, into books, into learning, into exploration, but not always to connection, not always to talking with other people, not always to engaging with the outside world. I do a lot of things to check in with myself, to take walks, to just think, to write, to sit, to just listen. And I don't really need to have other people in my life. I certainly enjoy having other people in my life, but I don't really need having other people in my life, right? The final reason why I don't necessarily assign myself to any personality type label is because to me, the people that are interested in the MBTI are too interested in horizontal development models, right? So instead of saying that you can be good or bad, or instead of having, saying that you can have a good or bad personality, in MTI, all personality types are good, and you, know, you can be a, any kind of personality type, but that doesn't say anything about what level of development you are at or where you're at in your life, right? And to me, I'm more interested these days in vertical development models, which means I'm more interested in what kind of a person do you want to be? Like, what kind of a person do you want to be like? How do you want to live your life? Not who you are right now, not how you describe yourself to friends, but what kind of a person do you enjoy being? What kind of a person are you in a flow state? What kind of a person are you when your energy is at the max, when your motivation is at the top, when you feel comfortable in your own skin and in your own body and in who you are, when you feel confident in yourself? Like, who are you then? And how can you be that person in every single moment of your life, in your work, with your friends, with your loved ones, and by yourself? And that's why I'm trying to bring about a change in my channel, a change where we go out and actually talk to people to get to know how they really think and feel and where people get to see finally the complexity of personality and how each person is unique. And while certainly you can listen to my videos and you can say, well, he types people wrong, he doesn't get every single person right, and he looks at people the wrong way and he has the definitions wrong, the question is not that, but the question is, do I help this person feel more understood? Do I? give them a space and a language to express things that are important to them? Do I manage to create the discussion around personality psychology, a discussion that brings us deeper to each other's, right? Because to me, the labels, the definitions, and how you see things don't matter. I've studied every single system in the Myers-Briggs type indicator, the objective personality, socionics, and of course, my own approaches. And while I find things I like about each one, my question is not, which system do you subscribe to? My question is, <laughs> what does this definition do? Why did you choose to define it that way? And how does it help us understand people better? So yeah, I changed my personality type. I let go of the labels and I became more confident in myself and in who I am. And I became more individuated and self-actualized, but I also became more integrated. I moved more towards balance. I didn't extremely focus on or identify with my own ego or dominant function. Instead, I broadened myself, broadened my horizons to allow myself to connect more with every single personality type, with every single personality. Because to me, I might meet you and you might be an ENFP, but what does that mean to you? And what does kind of a person does that make you? I don't know. <laughs> you could be so different from any other ENFP I've ever met. You could be such a unique variation, such a unique development of an ENFP that I haven't even seen this variation before or anything like you. And while it's certainly fun to work with labels to some extent, it's always important to go deeper because no person is a personality type. And that's something you notice when you hang around another person for a while. And that's why it's so difficult for you to type your partner, your closest loved ones, because they've shown you more than one side to themselves. They've shown you more personality types. They've shown you more contradictions, more differences, more nuances than you could ever think were possible in a specific personality type. My goal was never the label. My goal was to find and reach a higher level of understanding and awareness of myself and other people. What's your goal with MBTI and why do you love it so much? Let me know in the comments down below and thank you so much for watching.